So I'm going to go into the Cro-Magnon kingdom. Okay. The reason I did this with the, this teaching with the earth is because for one, I did the two kingdoms last Saturday. I needed to do these two kingdoms. And then next Saturday when I teach, it's just going to be on the Marine kingdom. And you, you'll definitely want to just like share that and bring as many people as possible because there's going to be a lot of revelation that, um, you know, I'm certain that's probably has not been taught or not been spoken about before, right? I mean, I haven't read a lot of other people's books, so I don't really know exactly what they say, but I just know things that the Lord has, has given to me. So, um, and last Saturday when I taught and I did the cosmic kingdom, the pandemonium kingdom is actually where the throne of Lucifer is at. And that is actually in the second heavens that pertain to the cosmic kingdom, right? So that I classified that together. So this Cro-Magnon kingdom is actually about Sheol. It's actually about hell. It's about under the earth. Okay. So that's obviously why I did it in the teaching with the, with the, with the earth. So the Cro-Magnon kingdom is the headquarters of the kingdom of hell or Sheol. Okay. This is the throne of hell. This is the realm of wildness, noisy chaos, disorder, confusion, uproar. Okay. It's the underworld or subterranean region. It's the inferior kingdom and its gates are located in the cemetery. Okay. Why? Because everything that pertains to hell pertains to death. Okay. So as I start to speak on this a little bit more, um, you'll understand, and some of you will actually get even some revelation about why some of these false churches, um, a lot of stuff like with the Catholic church and why they do like these weird types of like ceremonies and all this different stuff, right. That has to do with people who are dead. Okay. And some of you probably will have even some, you know, insight and stuff that I don't even know. Yeah. What you just mentioned, Marianne. Yeah, that's actually, it's going to get brought up uh, towards the bottom of this, but it has to do with secret, you know, there's things that have to do with secret societies and secret circles too. When they do those kinds of things and they do those kinds of rituals, um, it's, it's, they're doing it for the powers that come from these kingdoms. Okay. And I'm not saying that they don't uh, gain wealth or like notoriety light or, or fame or any of this stuff, right? Because we know a lot of those things have to do with certain types of elite people in the world. Okay. But when it comes to that, there's specific rituals that they do f pertaining to different kingdoms. Okay. People in the kingdom of darkness, even people that have been you and you've heard people that is, that's come from Hollywood, right. That have talked about certain stuff that has exposed certain stuff about human sacrifice and that sort of thing. Those types of things, those types of rituals, this is where the it starts there, okay? So the sacrifice starts, but it's it's a form of death. Blood is, is spilt. It's a form of a human sacrifice. You know, people die. And, and so the, uh, the original, or original initiation comes forth from this kingdom because that's what happens first in the ritual, okay? Then, then they start operating with things from other kingdoms, okay? Uh, Marine Kingdom, you see with all of them flashy, expensive stuff, right? Major, major mansions and all this different stuff. And I'm not saying if you haven't earned an honest living or whatever that you can't have any of these certain things, right? But personally, I'm like, why have a, why would I need a mansion with 20 bedrooms in it when I only have a certain amount of kids anyway? And if, if, if your whole family's not living in that place, then I don't really see the point of having all that, okay? Like, it just seems to me like it's just so much of... Oh, oh, just like a oh, oh, waste that somebody got to clean all that, man. And that's not going to be me, fam. And I'm not, and, and even paying somebody to clean it, you know, it's like, but anyhow, that's neither here nor there, really. That's just me talking in that aspect. So let's get back to what the, 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 the Lord is revealing here. So it's the underworld or subterranean region. Okay. It's the inferior kingdom and its gates are located in the cemetery. Like I mentioned, um, this world is ruled by Hades. Okay. We know that many times people will call this region Hades in and of itself. And I'm going to get into that here in, in a minute and kind of uh, why that why that is. All right. But Hades is actually a god, a demonic god. Okay. Principality. 
okay? This world is ruled by Hades, the demon god of death, okay? He is the god that is over all the angels of death, right? And I could go in like deeper in my teachings and start to give you certain names in the ranking of order of these principalities that are angels of death. But to be honest, that's probably not a safe thing to really put in that information. I'm not saying it's not safe for me, but it's not also it's not completely necessary to really know all of that. I think I believe that there is a reason why the Lord has had me um, really dive into the depths of a lot of this stuff so that I can I can speak certain things against uh, specific angels or or, you know, principalities and stuff. And I believe that there's other people that are out there that are also called to do the same thing. And I believe that collectively by his spirit, not by another conference, not by another deliverance, whatever, not by any of those things, but by his spirit, that these people are going to start to be brought together. Okay. So this is why I was talking about too, about my ministry, not even, you know, being about me like that. I'm just the one, you know, that the Lord has called me to do these things now. So I'm the one putting this stuff out, out, right? But I do know that collectively that God is going to bring groups of people uh, or people together to where it's going to form this group within this ministry. And it it's going to truly do the things that all of these other people only talk about doing. Right. And it's not just going to be because um, I started the ministry and I have this vast array of wisdom because I learn from people all the time. And that's what happens with these people when God brings them together. Um, they're learning and growing from one another constantly, right? From, you know, somebody going through a deliverance session with somebody that particular day and they they use some. So it's there's this interaction, there's this knowledge and wisdom that, that flows back and forth by the Spirit of the Lord because the people that are connected carry the Spirit of the Lord in them, right? So it's not really safe to just give tons of knowledge and wisdom out to people and just think that they can go and do whatever because you'll really get your life attacked, okay? So... Um, so this, this world is ruled by Hades, the demon God of death. Okay. Hades was the king of the underworld and God of the dead. He presided over funeral rites and defended the right of the dead to do burial. Hades was also the God of the hidden wealth of the earth that came from the fertile soil with nourished seed grain also to the mind wealth of the mind like taking out of the earth right the wealth of gold silver and other metals and materials okay this this in a here in a moment is where i'm going to get into and even bring up where i talked about gnomes okay so i brought up gnomes if you notice i brought them up pertaining to the earth but i didn't bring them up pertaining to what um kingdom they really operated out of okay they're still uh dem demonic uh you know they're still um, uh, demonic spirits governed by demonic powers, but they work a lot with uh, underneath the earth. Okay, they're they're growers, they're harvesters of these materials that come out of the earth. So, um, under him are, de are uh, demons, angels of death, like I mentioned, demons of death, uh, the incantations that pertain to death. Okay. And I, I put this at the end, but I, I'm sorry. I meant to, I meant to mention this, uh, kind of at the at the beginning. So let me let me change it, put it up here. Okay, this kingdom is the kingdom that operates in black magic. Okay, witches, warlocks, wizards, they operate in black magic. Okay, I meant to have that up towards the top so it helped give you a, a you know, a deeper understanding. Okay, so. Um, under him are the uh, uh, angels of death, demons of death, incantations, okay, along with demon reapers, also known as what they would call like grim reapers, okay, death hunters, necromancers, which many of you understand and, and being in the body of Christ, over time you've heard of other people gaining powers, right, there's a particular church that would have been out on the the West Coast, right? They had talked about before their leadership. They do like wizardry stuff, right? In their prophetic rituals, they've been known to, uh, you know, lay on graves, right? And, and grave soak and do that kind of stuff, right? 
All this stuff comes from the powers of the underworld, the powers of the de of, of the dead. Okay. So there are also different types of reapers, like grim reapers, okay? Those who dwell in the underworld, okay? And those who follow humans on the earth to keep them bound to death and disease, okay? So they can reap their souls when they eventually die, right? These are the ones that work hand in hand. So the underworld still works with the cemetery, but it doesn't have to work above the earth. Why? Because bodies are put within beneath the earth. So that is, although that happens in the natural, um, it is a spiritual representation of those people being placed under the earth. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm not saying everybody who's buried under the earth is going to hell. That's not what I'm getting at, but I'm saying it's a spiritual representation of them being placed under the earth. And so those reapers are there. Okay. But then there's other reapers that follow people on earth, right? And they, they will if if you if you've ever been in deliverance whether for yourself or for others had any types of sicknesses disease like cancer is a high ranking principality okay i've seen where a couple other people that are have kind of became famous over ministry and i've i've watched them you know call on the spirit of cancer i'm not saying that that's a bad thing what i am saying is that it, it is a higher ranking principality okay and it's not just some you know, it's not just a, a piddly, uh, you know, spirit of anxiety or something, okay? And again, not to put anybody down who's had to go through and deal with the spirit of anxiety. I'm just saying there's a, there's a difference in all of these things in life, okay? So, and when you, when people are on their deathbeds or people are in the hospital and that sort of thing, um, there is a, there is a spirit of death there, right? You know, that's why you see people who have uh, died uh, or they're, while they've been on the hospital bed, um, their, their spirit has been taken to the depths of hell, right? So, and some of those people have, have, you know, immediately when they've been taken there in the spirit started to repent, right? And they've been, God has on his own brought that spirit back into his body. I'm going to give you some revelation pertaining to that here in a moment. Okay. But any time that you see people facing the this uh, facing death, okay, if God's already called you into ministry uh, in a public manner where He's called you to pray for other people, right? I'm talking about not people in your bloodline, right? And do deliverance or any of that type of thing. Any time you come up come up against this, you come up against the the grim reapers of hell, right? The demons sent from hell to reap the souls, and come up against the the angels of death, okay? And you come against them. After you come against them, then you turn around, okay, and you call forth the spirit of that person to come back into their body, okay? And I'm going to give you this revelation pertaining to Jesus Christ himself, okay? A lot of people, when they talk about the death of Lazarus, this is why Jesus, it, Jesus didn't just, it, Jesus wasn't just taking his time because he needed to make a point about something with Lazarus, Okay. He already knew, he, he had already had the, the foreknowledge and the, the revelation was given to him by God. And this is how I know in Jesus being a seer, right? And a lot of people say, well, he knew everything um, because he was God, okay? And I don't want any of you to, to, to debate with me and say, I'm not following this guy because he's, he's discrediting Jesus. I'm not discrediting Jesus in anything, in nothing whatsoever, okay? I... I we all know everything that Jesus came to do and everything that he's done for us, okay? What I'm saying here is that he, how did he know that Satan was before the throne of God seeking to sift Peter like wheat? He knew that because that revelation came to him. He knew that in that moment. That had been given to him by God. He constantly went to the Father and prayed all the time all the time. He went He went away from the people and went to be with the Father all the time. Jesus Christ himself doesn't even know when he's coming back. Only the Father knows this. There's so many people will that, that will, they think is they think if they don't put him as, as God, God the Father, then they think that somehow they're going to go to hell because they think that, you know, they're discrediting him in some way, shape, or form. You will find that the majority of the people that believe in that way, they have an orphan spirit of some sort in their life. They don't know who their they don't know who their creator, their father is. There's a lot of people out there who think Jesus is their father, and that's not true. Okay, so what I wanted, what I was getting at is, is that when Lazarus died, 
Okay. And Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. Many people, when you think about this just in a natural perspective, in the natural mind, you will think that God, that, that he was just, that he was saying, come forth, Lazarus, come forth. And that his physical body just rose up and came forth. Lazarus was already dead. When, and when a person's physical body has died, their spirit and their soul leave that body. Same way Jesus did. His body rested in the tomb, but his, but his spirit and soul didn't, right? It says that it went to Hades and he, and he preached to the, he preached, right? To the souls that were there. That's scripture. Okay. When he called Lazarus forth, he didn't call Lazarus in the physical body. Jesus was speaking from his spirit into the spirit realm to Lazarus' spirit. He was telling the spirit of Lazarus, come forth. The spirit of Lazarus came forth back into Lazarus' physical body and Lazarus rose up. You hear what I'm saying? So, all right, uh, the demons in charge of ceremonies and rituals are priestly demons, okay? They have their own purpose. Uh, they have their own, like, hierarchy, right? And in the Cro-Magnon world, they are connected to the cemetery kingdom, okay? Anything relating to death is connected to this world in some way, shape, or form. No human is taken off this earth without Hades and the and the and the angels, okay, of death knowing about it. No person's taken off of this earth without Hades and the angel of death knowing about it. Okay? The subterranean demons reside beneath the surface of the earth and are liable to cause earthquakes and other terrain disasters, including tidal waves and, and, and that sort of thing, okay? They work a lot with volcanoes, and they're good at dealing with the tectonic plates like I, uh, like I had up in the, the top part there. Um, these types of spirits are very powerful, and most times they can only be summoned by blood and rituals performed by protective secret uh, circles and societies, like what was uh, uh, mentioned earlier. Yeah, a throne room experience will con yeah, convince you of your father. Yeah, we look different in the spirit. And that there, that's that's why, um, right, Jesus, yeah, a lot of people will argue with you about that. And, you, you know, you just have to do whatever the Lord tells you. Um, I'm going to do I'm going to do a, a teaching on it sometime. And I'm sure that, you know, a lot of people are going to um, want to throw stones. But you'll, you're going to see something funny on there because the Lord already has kind of giving me what what would happen and and this just kind of like this is just kind of like how i am and so i when i post this picture of this emoji um of me driving this dump truck it's not an actual picture of me in it but i created it right you're gonna see you're gonna you're gonna get a laugh like i'll bring my my i'll bring the stones to my own you know what i mean to my own uh stone throwing or whatever so but um yeah they're they'll they'll argue they'll they'll argue with you about that anyway and and the, and the reality of it is because a lot of people have not had deep uh experiences personally um you know in the realm of the spirit and like she mentioned they haven't had throne room experiences they haven't been before the father you know and that sort of thing it's like um the you know Jesus being here on the earth was a representation of us, like ideally, right? I mean, obviously we know that he never sinned and he was perfect and without sin and none of us can ever be that, right? So we do know that and understand that. But his purpose of being here oh, in the flesh give, gives us a representation like, why would the father place himself here to be something that we ourself could never be. And I'm not saying that we can be Jesus himself, you understand? But I'm talking about in the nature of him and the Lord working with us from heaven, right? And all these things as being seers. There's, there's a lot of people when they're not prophetic, they have a very hard time understanding these things because just they're, they can only understand scripture from their natural mind, like I mentioned, right? They'll read scripture and what, however they can make that, that understanding and that connection in their natural mind, that's what they roll with. 
that's how a lot of these leaders do things. They don't, they just don't understand how these, how spiritual things work. Okay. For some of you that hadn't been on a live before, uh, and uh, this, this has to do with Jesus and um, J John the Baptist, when their mothers were both pregnant with them. Okay. This has to do with the three parts of a, of a human being, the makeup of who they are, the spirit, right? The soul and the physical body. Okay. When, when, both of their mothers were pregnant with them and both of them came together and it, the Bible tells us that both of the babies leaped for joy in the in the the stomachs of their mothers. If you understand that from a natural perspective, you just think, oh, something supernatural happened. OK, but the reality of it is, is that in the natural two babies, they're not their minds are not even formed enough to even know in the natural realm and the physical that they would even be around each other. OK, the reason they know that is because the spirit man of Jesus and the spirit man of John the Baptist were in the spirit realm walking with their mothers. They were walking with their mothers because they were attached to their mothers because their physical body was in the physical stomach of their mothers. When they seen each other, the two spirit man of Jesus and, and, and John the Baptist, their two spirits came together with joy of seeing one another because their, their spirit man came together with that joy. Then it caused the physical babies in the belly to leap for joy. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying here? And, and, and the reason why the, that the father put Jesus supernaturally in the womb of his mother Right. And this is another reason why the blood of Jesus is as powerful as it is um, in the spiritual is because his blood didn't have all the chromosomes. This is why when people talk about him being the second Adam, him and Adam are the only physical bodies that never had the multiple chromosomes from the man, from a, a man and a woman. OK, so that's why the blood of Jesus is so is so powerful. That is a. That is a physical and a spiritual understanding of why the blood of Jesus is so, so powerful. Okay. And the father placing him in the womb of Mary supernaturally had more to do with what happened in the garden of, of Eden. And I, I spoke briefly about this last, uh, last weekend about how, uh, Satan and his deception was for the purpose of actually sleeping with Eve, okay, and birthing Cain. And sh and there's there's some people that may not agree with that, but if you look at Scripture, it does not give Cain uh, in the bloodline of Abel whatsoever. And it talks about how um, Cain looked different, right? And so and he, and he um, when it talks about him that Satan being cursed, being as a serpent, it's because that's how he gained entrance into the garden. The garden was guarded in the spirit realm, okay? The garden was guarded by angels, by flaming swords. The Bible tells us this. There was no way, shape, or form that as an angel that Satan was going to be able to get his make his way into the garden, right? And he shape-shifted, and some of you understand these things. And he shape-shifted, right, as a serpent, and slither through the grass. The Bible literally says that the rocks and the grass and the shrubbery were his covering. It can't be his covering as an angel. It's because that's how he was able to get himself undetected into the garden and be able to approach Eve and then be able to turn himself back into this, you know, most handsome man, right? And be able to uh, seduce her, okay? And so, therefore, they 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 end up birthing uh can, they end up birthing both the twins and you could research this if you want to it still happens today that twins that you know uh both children can be conceived in the womb and they could have separate fathers okay and so with with all of that in mind it helps you understand why god didn't uh trust for that that kind of intimacy that's why he he put jesus inside of a, a virgin that had never been with anyone right so that the enemy had no way, shape, or form to be able to come in and manipulate um, the birth of his son. Yep. Let's see. Okay, so um, I ended with the protective secret circle. So they are summoned. They are summoned. The demons from this kingdom are summoned by witches, warlocks, and wizards who desire to have these demons come into their uh, body in order to gain power, okay? Again, like I mentioned before, um, 
angels don't actually inhabit humans. You know, angels themselves, nowhere in scripture, good or bad, do we see angels actually inhabiting uh, human beings, okay? There can be the spirit of the Antichrist and that sort of thing uh, that that happens, and the angels can shape shift a, into humans themselves. But we're talking about an angel actually taking possession, taking over an actual physical human body, okay? So, um, but the 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 demons, these wishes will summons these demons in order to ha uh, come into their body to gain more power, okay? All right, so it is said that the demonic guardian of the cemetery world, okay, catch this in the spirit pertaining to some of the churches, any of the churches that have the clergy, okay, the lay ministers, other religious leaders, right? It says that the demonic guardian of the cemetery world wears a robe like a priest and a chain with a cross. Many ministers of the gospel are under this demon. We see this dress code being adapted by clergymen, lay ministers, you know, even certain elders in certain denominations, okay, other religious leaders whose ministerial dressing is a robe and a cross in some instances, okay? You've seen this even at one point in time, uh, Jake's, he, he did a bunch, a lot, I think, until people started saying stuff about it and calling him out about it, so he stopped doing it, okay? But it is said that he rules um, and oversees even like um, the night's festi festivities, and by night's festivities, we're talking about secret societies, okay? And the dress code for these secret societies and the parties, okay? And I'll erase that. It's about, the, about them operating the black magic, okay? Again, these witches, warlocks, and wizards, they will use items that pertain to death, Okay, you will see them use human skulls, uh, even certain animal skulls, things that pertain to death, things that pertain to the cemetery world and that sort of thing. All the rituals and all the stuff that they do, the, they're highly active in the blood, like it mentioned, because it, uh, it's a representation, right, of bloodshed, right, and death. So the, the rituals, the things that the witches, warlocks, wizards, and these secret societies and stuff do, um, they use all of these different forms of items that um, pertain to death itself, you know, natural death itself, okay? And even some of them, for a lot of these secret societies, in their rituals, um, and I know some of you know this, so you'll probably put this in the comments, but, um, you know, even some of, like, the initiations and the rituals and that sort of thing that uh, people do, there is a form of pretend death that takes place, okay? And what this does is it actually... Uh, causes a like a spiritual form of death in, in a way so that then they can be resurrected okay so we see this when the bible tells us we're supposed to die to ourselves right die to the things of this world so we can be truly resurrected with christ okay and not just resurrected with christ in in our, our afterlife okay but resurrected with christ now and walk with walk with him now okay so all, a lot of these societies, they they have these people go through like uh, in the form of a ritual and in the initiation. Um, they'll they'll lay down in a form of death, right? Like on a table while they're like it, it appear to be death, and and whoever the leader is, right, will perform some kind of ritual or do certain things over them. Okay, there's various things, right? I mean, just 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 various things that pertain to these different these different groups. So. I mean, I could probably get into a thousand things from pouring stuff on their bodies to, you know, uh, taking weapons, you know, and 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 laying that weapon across their throat, laying that weapon across their abdomen, laying that weapon across their feet, you know, um, uh, using things like as far as um, even like incense and powders and blowing that on them and doing different stuff. Okay, and that's why even I'm going to do another teaching at some point in time. And I don't know if it'll be a video or I'm sure that it'll probably be because I feel like the Lord's just going to keep, you know, throughout this time, keep having me do videos. But um, to where, uh, you know, even um, and I, I mentioned this when I talked about the soul ties for many of you, some of you that have been in, uh, been in colleges and you've been in fraternities and sororities. OK, these things are big on initiations and rituals and the things that have to take place. Right. Whatever it is that they 
deemed necessary, you know, and it's a lot of it's degrading type stuff and different things like fraternities and sororities. They're all demonic. They're all based off of a demonic kingdom, regardless of how cool it may seem or whatever. And so any of you who have been in, involved in those things, you need to hit that soul type prayer, um, you know, again and, you know, go over that go over those things pertaining to the any sororities that you've been in like i can name i can name a lot of people that are even in the body of christ and, and even in like the music industry the christian music industry that uh were involved in a lot of these things right and the, so and they even kind of started off kind of well when they first started doing their their ministry or whatever in music and then they quickly fell okay anytime you're in christianity and you're even if the Lord hasn't authorized you and okay you to sign any type of paperwork or contract to make music and make a song with a person who lives their life for the world and, and this other person that you're making a song with has demonic ties to the hierarchies that are in the, these industries, okay? These other peoples have, have literally signed their names. They're initiated into these other things you as a Christian are not allowed to go and sign any type of contracts to go and make a song together to where collectively you earn royalties or whatever off of these things, okay? Like you're making pacts, you're making covenants, you're making oaths, you're making agreements with the kingdom of darkness in some way, shape, or form. And once you start doing it even just the littlest bit, you know, this gonna, the door is going to stay open, All right? So, okay, I'll, I'm going to talk uh, briefly about the gnomes real quick. We're getting uh, almost to the end, and then we can do some questions. Um, so the gnomes, the gnomes are the growers and harvesters of the elementals, okay, spirits of the earth. Therefore, they represent the element of the earth in the kingdom of darkness. They have been described as a few feet high, very reluctant with uh, very reluctant to interact with humans, okay? This is also why you see uh, all these gnomes that people put all over the place, right? Uh, they turn it into a form of a decoration. Um, um, you know, why they're they're short. Like, people did, somebody didn't just, like, come up with this idea randomly uh, of, like, a gnome, right? And just started making money off of it, okay? Like, all of these things came from the spirit realm. There's, there people have seen them, okay? Spiritually, they're very reluctant to interact with humans, and they're able to move through solid earth as easily as humans move through the air. Okay? The earth is filled almost to the center with gnomes, right? These, these people, these demonic spirits of statures. They are the garden, they are the guardians of treasures, of mines, and of precious stones and materials that we mine out of the earth. And when you really think about it, like we don't see it happening a whole lot, so we don't really, our mind can't sometimes wrap around the, the vastness of what that actually is, okay? The vastness of how much mining actually comes out of the earth from, from liquids like to oils to other miner, minerals that are used. Do you understand how many minerals actually go into making steel? When they make steel beams or when they make rolls of steel, right, that they stamp out and they press into the panels of cars, Okay, when they use these steel beams to make buildings, bricks, they're all made from materials and minerals from this earth. Okay, all of this stuff that comes from it. And when you start to understand from a natural and spiritual perspective of how quickly and vastly this world has grown, like let's just say just even in the last like 50 years. Okay, when you would go to a city, you might have like a couple of high buildings, right, like tall buildings. That what we would consider like kind of like skyscrapers, right, at that time. And you might have two, three, four, five, maybe a half dozen, right, depending on what city or what. If you're on the coast or bigger city, it was more, okay? But when you really think about the vastness of what's been built in the last like 50 to 100 years, I mean, look at like what's, ha look at what's happening. The only thing all of this, the only way all of this stuff could happen from houses being built to all of this stuff is, is things that have been mined from the earth. From the earth okay even like like it like i mentioned here the precious stones okay different um different uh treasures you know a lot of these things are uh considered treasure in a way you know oils and and these different types of uh materials 
All right. So um, they, the gnomes, they, they are said to have caused this landslide that destroyed a Swiss village, right, of Plurs in the year 1618. Okay. The villagers had become very wealthy from a local gold mine, right, that had been guarded by these demonic spirits. Okay. And they, these, everybody in the whole place became wealthy. Like there was enough where like all of these people went and they mined out this whole entire place and all of them gained all of this wealth and all of this prosperity. Okay. And, and if we know from what I was talking about, about the Marine kingdom and like all of these high end luxury items and all the stuff that people chase after and spend their money on, right. You can see how people get themselves entangled with the Marine kingdom because they are exchanging their money, which is really supposed to be God's money. Okay. They're exchanging that money for all of these goods and all of these high-end goods. And that opens up the door and it brings a, a, a connection and a covenant with people in the Marine Kingdom. So you can see how something like this and these people would mine this, get all of this, this gold and have this vast majority of wealth all of a sudden. You could see how their souls weren't ready for that type of corruption that it was going to bring. You get what I'm saying? I mean, I don't know the details of every single thing that happened, but you know, wherever you have these kinds of things, there's always going to be all kinds of evil, all kinds of perversions, right? All kinds of different stuff happening, right? Because money makes people, it deceives people to think that they can just do all the, whatever it is that they want, right? It's like this false form of safety, right? For a lot of people, it's false, false form of power, okay? And we see how in this world, you know, money does have its own form of power, but it's really not, right? It, it really what it does is it brings people into deeper sin, deeper deception, okay? And that's exactly what happened with these people. So it brought them into de demonic covenants, right? Through this greed, right? Through this this wealth. So, and so there ended up being this huge, uh, you know, mudslide and it took out, you know, almost everybody that had been, uh, you know, involved in, in, in that village and stuff. So, um, so, uh, I'm going to give you a few more scriptures and then we'll go into, we can go into some questions. Um, so this is, uh, Revelations 20, let me put this in the comment, Revelations 20, 13, and 14. Okay. It says, and this was this is what talks about uh, Hades. Okay, these these are pertaining to that to that kingdom. Okay, it says, and the sea gave up the dead, which were in it. This is what I need you to understand. When it's talking about the sea giving up the dead, which were in it, what do you think that they're talking about? Do you think that there's a bunch of dead people that just go to the sea? Okay, there's a bunch of dead people that just randomly go to the sea that were in it. Okay. It's talking about a kingdom that's there. It's talking about a kingdom that's there. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and Hades gave up the dead. Right? Because now here it's talking about Hades. It's involved in the next kingdom. And Hades gave up the dead which were in them. And they were judged. Every one of them according to their deeds. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. Okay. Revelations 20, 13 and 14. All right. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. It's talking about a kingdom. Gave up the dead which were in it. And death and Hades gave up the dead which were in them. And they were judged. Every one of them according to their deeds. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. All right. So Luke 16, 23 is going to be the next scripture I'm going to give you. There we go. Okay. It says, in Hades, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and saw Abraham far away and Lazarus in his bosom. Okay, this is where like they'll say that Hades is just a representation of hell and not actually a God, right? Not actually a God that's that oversees hell. So it's saying, oh, it's supposed to say if Hades, 
not in. I don't know how it got the the end there. So if Hades, no, that's right, had lifted up his eyes, right? So it's talking about the God being in torment and saw Abraham far away and Lazarus in his bosom. Why did he see Lazarus? Why did I, what did I talk to you about a little bit ago? When Lazarus was dead, his spirit had left his body. His spirit and soul left his body. So when Jesus called Lazarus to come forth, he wasn't speaking human being to human being. He was speaking as a spirit man. He was speaking with that authority, and he was telling the spirit of Lazarus to come forth. So when he was speaking to him, he knew that he was speaking to his spirit, which brought his la which brought Lazarus' spirit back forth out of those depths, brought it back into his body, and he came back to life. Spirit to spirit. Yeah, that's right. All right, the next one is Revelation 6, 8. Put that in the comments. Okay. Revelation 6, 8 says, I looked and behold, an ashen horse, and he who sat on it had the name Death, and Hades was following with him. Okay. Hades, the principality. Right, the God of hell. Okay, and he is he he is the the God of hell, but the principality over him is the devil. Like I mentioned, who's for and devil are different. Okay, and the devil is governs uh, all of the kingdoms that are in the earth. So even the marine kingdom, the devil's ultimately over that. Okay, but then the Lucifer is above 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 them. Okay, and when I get to teaching you about uh, the marine kingdom, there is a lot of there's a lot of gods and goddesses. Okay, that work and operate in the marine kingdom. There's like three main kingdoms that are within the marine kingdom, even. Okay, and they have they have queens that run. Okay, I don't want to say too much. I'll 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 teach on it. Um, so I looked and behold an ashen horse and he who sat on it had the name death and Hades was following with him. Authority was given to them over a fourth of the earth, a fourth of the earth. Okay. And this fourth of the earth does not pertain to a certain area. Okay. So it's not like it's not like authority was given to them over the U.S. and that's a fourth of the earth, okay? They're talking about a fourth of the earth, meaning a fourth of the people, right? Collectively all around the globe, a fourth of them, okay? To kill with the sword and with famine and with pestilence and by the wild beasts of the earth. 